Shut up and sit down. So here we are guys, out on another one, as you can see right in front of me, it'll be family of seals here, plus behind them some more seals, so uh, hopefully they're just going to leave me to it, these items here to my right, that's known as seal rock, so that explains the seals, so welcome back, I'm hoping you've missed me, probably didn't, but I certainly missed doing this, it's been a uh, busy couple of weeks, to say the least, I've been flat out recently, and it's not getting out in quite a while. This is the first real summer's day I've been able to actually get out and enjoy it. Um, so I'm out on my own today. I'm in back in Malal, where I live. And my plan is to head out towards Danakadi, or as close as I can. Get as close as I can to Danakadi in the time frame that I have. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. So straight ahead of me, I'm not sure, you might be able to see that stripey lighthouse out in the distance there. That's the target. That's where we're going. Well, that's not actually, it's around the corner to the left of it. So that is out on the Copeland Islands, so that's where we're not going. Will we see it up ahead of me there? Pop its head up. These boys to the right of me won't leave me alone. They keep checking me out. But, uh... Yeah, that's today's plan anyway. Let's hope that it goes that way, goes swimmingly, and there's no hassle or trouble. That would be nice. Um, it's the first time I've done this journey. I've been sort of thinking recently about where to go next and where do I want to go, how much effort do I want to fit in, and I think this, this to me, this is since I got the kayak, since before I got the kayak, this is a route that I wanted to do. But it is a wee bit longer, you're talking probably six and a half, seven miles return trip. So if I even do the whole way, I might not, I'll wait and see. But uh, yeah, that's, that's what we're looking at anyway, so... Wobbly wobbly. We're actually, uh, you know, in my head, I'm like, oh my god, it's really deep here, it's really not. And then you look down and there's rocks about four feet below you, so, whoa, that was a big swell. It's not overly reassuring. Something big popping its head up out there, you probably can't catch it on the camera, and it's a wee bit too wobbly for me to try and get it, but it'll spin around straight out in front of me. You might see a head come up, see it? I don't know if that is a sailor, what the hell that is? Probably is. I mean, like, realistically, we're in Northern Ireland. You don't get a lot of animal life, bar really, seals. 
there has been wheel sightings here before. Uh, just to put a correction up for one of my earlier videos, there was a guy commented on it. The video at uh, Orlock, and he said that it was a common orca sighting spot. That is true. It is an orca sighting spot, but the chances of you seeing one in a year are very, very slim. Yeah, they're not. Uh, they're not exactly native to Northern Ireland, but. They have been seen there before, um, just not by, I've never seen them, I don't think any of my friends have seen them. But I have heard stories through like local radio stations and stuff of orcas turning up um, at that spot. Uh, to the gentleman that said it, I completely understand where you're coming from, and I'm sure you have lived in that area your whole life and never seen one, it's very common I'm sure. But the reason that it is quite a common orca spot, say, not, I say common, uh, the reason that it would be one of your best chances of spotting an orca in Northern Ireland is because all the way up this coast, the colonies of um, seals and sea lions, big fat ones that live here, are quite big. There's a large colony of them. So, with that in mind, it's a great food source for them when they are on their travels up to the Scandinavians, up to the Scandinavias, up to Scandinavia. I'm good with the words today. Um, so this path is taken from time to time by the orcas all the way up here. And right up on up the coast towards Norway, Denmark, Sweden, and uh, that's the the reason it was stated uh, because they do have a food source there. It's a good travel area for them because there's somewhere they can actually eat. Sadly, I've never seen one. Would love to see one. Would not like to be out on my own. I don't think and see one because I genuinely think I would have a heart attack. There has been. I mean, I've been out a few times without the camera as well. You know, just go out on my own with, or with friends. Um, to enjoy it without the camera and just get a day off not really recording and doing it for the love of it. Sorry, I'm just trying to navigate all these giant, giant rocks. Bloody hell, it's size that one underneath me. Um, and yeah, I mean, I uh, <laughs> we were in around the shallows at Orlock one day and I hit a rock. I didn't just hit a rock, I, uh, I mounted a rock. It was just under the surface of the water. Very, very difficult to see. And yeah, it uh, it was absolutely terrifying to say the least. Like, that's me being quite polite about the whole ordeal. I think I screamed like a four-year-old. Scott, who was behind me in his inflatable, that was the reason I went first because I didn't want him snagging any rocks because he would sink. Scott, was who was behind me, I think almost died of laughter, and <laughs> it just wasn't a fun experience for me at all. It uh, it was absolutely petrifying, but. I made it out alive, it was an experience, and that was that. So, to my left here, it's Malile on down like this direction. Straight in front of me is the Malile Road, I think, in the Donagadee, or is the Donagadee Road? No, it's the Malile Road, I'm pretty sure. You have a new nursing home that's just been finished off there that looks very expensive, very nice. And it's going to be quite hard to see, but I'm going to go closer to it, but straight in front of us right now, on those rocks, there is actually a big rock, I'll try and point it out for you, and that is the commemorative rock from which if you stand out on the road and look over the top of it to the first point where the sea makes contact with the top of the rock, that, roughly speaking, is where that ship went down uh, many years ago. Big swell. Oh, boy, is it there. Oh, boy, is it there. We're kind of out the thick of it here now. Uh, right in front of me, we can now see the White Lighthouse, which is Donegal Day. That's today's destination. If I manage to make it that far, no guarantees that I will. You can also see just to whoa, big, big kelp field under me, right under me, like a couple of feet. Goodness gracious me, rocks everywhere here as well. It's crazy. Like, 
You have to keep your wits about you. Bear in mind anyone who's followed this channel, the few videos that I've posted so far will know I'm an amateur. New to this, no training. So, uh, some people might question the safety of what I'm doing today reasonably. I understand why you would. I've taken all the necessary precautions. Um, my phone is tied around my neck, just in case we end up going in. The phone won't leave me, and I can call for help. Um, I'm also not that far from the shore, and within swimmable distance, the tide's going in, so the current's in my favour. Uh, a few family members know exactly the route that I'm taking today, and I've asked them to call me by a certain time if they haven't heard from me. These are minimum the precautions you want to take if you're heading out solo. Just in case something would happen, I mean, it's a beautiful day, it's relatively calm, touch wood, that, that doesn't change. But, yeah, these are the precautions you want to be taking, just in case something would end up going south for you. A uh, friend of mine was out the other week, I wasn't with him, he was out with a friend he works with. He will remain nameless, but uh, it's two inflatable kayaks, so we lent a friend one of them. They went to the Orlock. Uh, which you'll see up in the top corner here, link to the video of the day, <gasps> link to the video of the day we went to Orlock, and um, that was maybe two or three weeks ago, and yeah, he basically ended up with one of the kayaks on the rocks, it burst, and ended up being dragged out to sea, and they couldn't get it back, now, he didn't have a name tag on it, so posts all over social media, fear for some kayaker's life, rightly so, you know, um, kayak washes up a shore that's burst, that's there's going to be questions, is that person okay, what's happened, where are they, do they know that their kayak has burst, are they alive? Uh, so yeah, that's exactly what happened, post on social media, and they ended up getting the kayak back, but one thing I would recommend, take a sharpie, take a permanent marker or something, put a tag on yours, whatever you can, that says your name, and a contact number, or your name and address, whatever, just to help you along, in case it does end up going missing. I also, uh, I can hear, I it was a boat, but it must be a plane or a helicopter or something, um, above me. Just trying to stay cautious here of all these giant fields of rocks, because there's tons of them, and this kelp is really, really close to the bottom of my kayak, meaning that, I assume meaning that the kelp is under the rocks, and it is a bit risky. Uh, the bright side of this route is you have a road to your side at all times. There's a couple of patches on it where you'll be blindsided and people won't be able to see you. But right now, to my left, there is a beach with plenty of people on it. Just in case anything would go south and I couldn't get my phone or whatever happened. They have seen me and I hope would call for help. Say so I hope... Ooh, that's a big swell. Ooh, bloody hell, who's that one? I'm starting to get a... Reasonable bit choppy right here now. Definitely a helicopter above me, but I can't see it. Can't really spin around and look either. I want to get charging on and get done here. I'm on a bit of a time limit today, so uh, nearly a mile in. Not even halfway there yet. Sort of running out of time already, so this one might be a little bit short. We might cut it a bit short. Maybe just go to the Copelands. Have a look around there. Not the Copen Islands, sorry. The Commons is what I'm thinking of. Wow, look at that. Not if you guys can see that yet. Hey, hey I chose that. Flying pretty low with it. Absolutely class. Honestly, I, uh, I have a bit of a fear of deep water and what lies underneath it. But uh, I would much rather be doing this in deep water than up in that plane because no, no, and hell no. Not for me. Don't really do heights. So I think the chances are probably I'm going to cut this one a little short today. The million spectators on the beach watching me right now. Whew. By a million, I mean about seven.
Um, oh, I hear that big plane again. Here comes that plane again. Oh, maybe not. It's went the other way. So I'm at a bit of a crossroads here as to what to do. If I go out right, I'm heading into the real deep sea to avoid those rocks, or I can go left and go in and around the commons and try and navigate my way around, which I think I'm going to go left because arms are tired. The closer I get to the shore, probably the better. I can take it nice and slow and just try and avoid any big rocks, which might be taking a bite, which I... I'm going to run on the assumption there's going to be a few of them because just judging by what's in front of us right now looks like rocks might be a factor so uh, we'll stop in here hopefully navigate our way through stop in here and get a wee drink right oh, find ourselves in a bit of a sticky spot here this is really 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 shallow stuff Oh, goodness me. It doesn't look like it because you seem like you're miles out, but like right there to them rocks at my left, the water is probably ankle deep. So it's quite hard to decide what way you're going to push through this. I'm just going to go straight on here in the hopes that it doesn't get really, really shallow. Oh, goodness me. We're in big waves now, which means it is getting pretty shallow. That's not great. Yes. Oh, my good God. It is shallow here. Take it nice and slowly. Nice and slowly. Yeah, there's a very, very strong possibility of us actually bottoming out here at one point or another and me ended up out of the kayak. I'm going to have to buy a GoPro, I think, because the risk of the phone here is pretty high. It's making me kind of nervous. Let's see. Go that way. Ugh. Holy crap, yeah, that helps actually on the surface now. I think this must be the shallowest part. Obviously, just like a wee bank that's here. As I say, checking the tide times, the tide is coming in. Low tide was 2 or 2.41, so we're probably just coming up on low tide now, actually. And after that, it'll be in being for 7, which means hopefully by the time I'm heading back, the water will be a bit higher and I'll not have to navigate through all this. Oh, blister already. It's a good start. Oh, God, it's shallow here. Lovely houses in front of us right now. Yeah, I've got to say, this is the first blister we've got doing this. Uh, oh, actually, I've just remembered it's not a blister. It's from my roof racks, which are like straps. And when I was releasing the strap, I burnt it. Burnt my finger on it. So, yeah, that's what that is. Smart man. We'll get it in the water in a wee second just to get it washed out. Take the, add a bit of sting to take a bit of sting away. Yeah, we're still pretty shallow here, but this is quite manageable, obviously. Also, I can't speak today. Also, it's really peaceful. The water's just dead chilled. I think this is a good chance to get some fluids in. Yeah, so, I don't know if the last video picked it up, but yeah, there's a, straight up ahead, once you get up around this corner, at the end of these rocks, there's the Donaghetty Fancy Harbour where the lighthouse is, and then the actual harbour where the fishing boats come out from, and it's just like a wee sled into the rocks. So it means you can't really see if anything's coming until you're in it, and, you know, if it's coming out from the harbour as opposed to going in, so little bit worried about that. Um, don't really know if I'm going to go all the way around there or not. I might just sack it and turn around very soon. But uh, the other reason for that is because it is starting to get pretty choppy out here compared to what it was when we left, which means it could get really bad by the time we're heading in. Hopefully not. Fingers crossed. You really want to be negotiating stuff like that when you're in your own. Yeah, I can see white water breaking out over the rocks there, Tonic and he, so I think we'll probably just go to these rocks in front of us, take another wee minute, and then spin around and head back to shore. It's probably the safest bet at this point, I would imagine. Oh, 
they don't want to be hit by one of them white waves. Well, it's big. Maybe time to swing around here. Whoa, yes, I think this. How far have we done? 1.76 miles. Probably pushing it a little bit more. those white waves are coming from low line rocks or high line rocks whatever you want to call them because it doesn't really seem to be in one spot which is quite good but I just don't know if I want to risk heading out any further it's starting to get well it is it's starting to get it's much rougher now than it was earlier so that's still completely manageable don't get me wrong but yeah, this makes you a bit weary. Whew. Yeah, that's definitely low line rocks and the tide's turning me towards them. Super. Oh, that's a big ass wave. <laughs> Bloody hell. Right, I think that's me. I think I'm gonna call the day. Almost done again. Next time, we got to the commons. It's a half decent wee trail. Long way to go back. Oh, those rocks look cool. Oh, that must be the harbour on up. Okay, right. Well, maybe just spin on up a little bit more. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so the rocks right in front of me. I think that's the old harbour. No, it's not because I can see the tops of the boats. They're a good bit on round. I have to pick up the pace here. I want to get through this bit quite quickly because to my immediate left now is where that white water is breaking. So the quicker I can get out of these swells, the better. Guys, if you're watching this and you've watched a few of my videos before, you like the channel, if you would really want to help me out, you could hit that wee subscribe button and maybe a wee like on the video would be amazing. But other than that, please drop me a comment anywhere you want me to go. I'm kind of struggling for ideas. I mean, I'm fairly new to this, obviously, and we're considered doing uh, the River Lagan in Belfast, but. There's weirs of you and all sorts of obstacles that you have to navigate and I just don't know if it would be enjoyable but if you guys would watch it and you just want to see it then we're going to have a bash at it but uh, even if just someone, one of you just leave a wee comment and let me know or you just want to see me go, um, that would be amazing and I'll definitely make it happen somewhere obviously in Northern Ireland or even maybe even down south like I'd maybe even be willing to make maybe a trip over a couple of days and see if I can get a couple of people involved um, if that came to it, but anywhere you can recommend, anywhere you want to see, drop a wee comment. Let me know.
a nice wee place to go for a walk here if you've never been to the Commons. Leads right round into Donegate Town Centre. It's a good wee spot. I did, I'm not going to lie, at one point I considered bringing the rope with me. Going my line to Donegate E, docking up, going up to my uncle. My uncle has a cafe in Donegate E. If you haven't, please check it out. His food's amazing, his coffee's incredible. It's called Saints and Sinners Cafe. Uh, we toyed, heading, uh, toyed with heading into there and getting a coffee, docking up and all the rest of it, but... No, I forgot. I'm absolutely destroyed. Ooh, something just made a big bubble under my boat. That was a bit uneasy. Unnerving. Goodbye. Yeah, we're starting to get into the heavy swell here. Oh, my feet are sore. Oh, stretch them out a bit. And then when you go around the corner, there's a load of pointy rocks with usually quite strong currents splashing onto them, smashing onto them, splashing onto them. So, yeah, I think this is where I'm going to call it, guys, and turn around and head back. You always get a few spectators when you're out in areas like this. Like, feel like a celebrity. Oh, look at Stephen Beckham in his kayak. Hand wash because it's bloody sore. Oh, what was that? Oh, sorry. 
So like a big splash from behind me. Oh. So, uh, for any of you guys out there watching this who are thinking about kayaking and stuff, this is going to sound really stupid and you're just going to take the piss out of me if you want. But <laughs> before I get into kayaking, one of my real fears for being out in water like this was sharks. I know, Tyra Northern Ireland, you don't get sharks, you only get basking sharks. But that's actually not true. There's uh, quite a few species of sharks in this water. Some of them are quite dangerous. Um, now, I'll, I'll ramble through this, but there is, a, there is a point to it all, so bear with me. You have the poor bagel shark, which is the closest living relative to a great white. Comes from the mackerel family of sharks. Poor bagels live in these waters. Maybe, I don't know if necessarily these waters, like this channel between Northern Ireland and Scotland, but they live in the channel between the southeast of England, or the southwest of England and Ireland. So it is possible that they're also here. But, um, poor bagels, makos, I've been found in these waters. Blue sharks are quite common, although I don't think. I wouldn't like to be bit by one, don't get me wrong, but I, I dare say if you got into a tangle with a blue shark, you'd most likely make it out, but please, don't get it twisted. I don't want to get into a tangle with a blue shark, just to be absolutely clear. So, we're all on the same page. Whoa, that was a big swell. I wasn't paying attention, you see, catches you out. So, uh, yeah, there are sharks in these waters. And then obviously the basking shark, which has no teeth, but is huge. Like, I would not like to see any of them below me, but that was one of my big fears. And like, realistically, the chances of anything happening to you, touch wood, I'm saying this, you know, you probably see me on the news tonight, so I get ate by a shark. But chances of anything happening out here are very slim. It's a very, very safe part of the world to go and get your kayak out. Um, I mean, look, don't get me wrong, you know, I'm saying this as if, like, look at me, I'm very brave out here kayaking where there's a couple of sharks in the water. I watch videos of boys that go out there, South Africa, Cape Town. It's like, mate, are you insane? You could not, like, it looks beautiful, it looks absolutely gorgeous, and I'm sure it is. But you could not pay me to get in those waters. Cape Town, Johannesburg, no way, not a hope in hell. Great whites, huge great whites. It's like, mate, never, never in a million years. You see people, like... You know, if, if I'm the first kayaking person you've watched on YouTube, I'm flattered, thank you very much, but go and check out the guys that have had shark encounters. America, Africa, Australia. It's absolutely nuts. It's terrifying. And they're all just so chill about the whole thing. I mean, I would, like, I would drown, because I'd just seize up in fear and, and just die in front of them. Like, no way, man. Not for me. But, my point is this. Nothing really to worry about here. You know, there's no great whites, there's no hammerheads and great hammerheads. Makos is about as bad as it gets. Poor bagels would be quite a scary one to come across, but I think you'd survive. Maybe. And the chances of seeing any of them were quite slim, in my opinion. I did actually watch a thing the other day that was done by a British researcher. Um, I think it was a good couple of years ago, like, but he was talking about the possibilities of Great Whites in Britain, specifically up the up this coast between Ireland and England and Northern Ireland and Scotland. Um, he was talking about the islands up the top of Scotland. I can't remember is the Shetlands or I can't remember the name of them, but um, there's a strong possibility of maybe not now, but in, certainly in the near future. Great Whites being a part of that ecosystem because that is one of the largest, or maybe the largest seal colony in the world, up there, in that part of the world, which is an abundant food source for them. The seals are humongous, and uh, the water temperature was the other interesting thing, so I can't remember, but say it was something like, Great Whites have to live in between 12 and 22 degrees of water Celsius. The water up there in summer is like 14 degrees, which means perfect temperature. Like this is perfect temperature right now for them. But if you go and check out uh, shark trackers, I think the closest one ever came to this coast was like 2,000 miles away. 
and that was even quite staggering that it had done that. So certainly, hopefully, not certainly, but hopefully, they uh, don't make it here. I love sharks. I would love to see a great white one day in my life, but not when I'm in a kayak. I think it would have to be on a cruise ship or a warship. I don't even think I'd like to be in a submarine. I think it would scare the absolute life out of me. I don't think, I know. I love sharks in the sense that they're cool animals. But I would not like to tangle with one. I thought I would uh, give my son, he's with my uh, my mum at the minute, so I thought I would give him a quick video call there because he came down with us last week to Bally Walter and he just did not want to get in the water, which I don't know why, well I do know why now, but it didn't at the time. Uh, he's three next month and we had him down like a year ago and he loved it, he had a great day. But since then, he's been watching these videos on YouTube and he's this guy called Stephen Maggie. And there's a video about Halloween and the sea monsters out at sea. And now every time we'd ask him why he won't go in the water, he tells us it's because of the sea monsters and the sharks. So I thought we'd give him a quick video call and be like, look, see, I'm out checking for sea monsters and sharks. And there's neither. We're fine. So uh, in saying that, I think that's a bird's feather. So that's a worrying sign. No, it's not. We're sweet. We're good. Woohoo!
all right that's us pretty much back um which basically means it's the end of this video uh thanks very much for watching i really appreciate it my mouth is so dry <laughs> um yeah really appreciate it guys and uh, if you enjoyed the video please hit that wee like button and uh hit the subscribe button too if you fancy it and the wee bell notification so you don't miss any future videos um and yeah peace out catch you in the next one bye